Welcome back to Engineers. I'm Rob and today we are back in our testing facility here on Mars. Today we are looking at this one, which is a lot of transmitter and what we can use it for. The transmitter, it can do what it says, it can transmit stuff. We are doing three different test samples of where you can transmit something to different things. So let's say that you have a value here, let's say this, this is our current temperature. Let's say you want to see this somewhere else in the base, like over here. To do this, you'll need two logic transmitter, two, uh, one writer in this section, over here one reader and one writer and one LED. That's what we're going to do. So you're basically going to copy this value here over there. So to do this, first we put our, our logic transmitter here. So we take the, the when, when the power is facing up, then it's actually the quick way. So you see this one is facing down, that means it's wrong. If it's top left corner, it's usually the quick way, quick orientation. Here you also see here it says unit. Now the transmitter, let's just dump that here, has three data input or output. They are basically both of them, and then one power. Next thing we're gonna take a IO chip, pop that down here. We want a logic writer. Take our cable cutter, take some cable, pop that in there, turn that this way. Mm. Actually, so now this one will then write something from this math unit that we made in the last test, the last tutorial, and send it to this one. On this one, we then gonna have a straight on, a power up here, and so. And that is the wiring of this one done. Now let's go over here. First we take our our reader again. So we take it, so we have the chip, the, the power on the quick side. Then we're gonna take two IO, what, what do they do with IOs? Then we're going to take two IOs, put one here, which is the reader, one here, which is the writer. Lovely. We can take one console, we can put the console wherever we want to, we just put up here. And then we just wire everything up. So now you can see I've done the wiring of it. As you can see, I've saved a bit of cable because here we have an in output, we have input, that means that this one will send out, it's only here sending out and only here it's reading, so we don't need anything else here. So we can turn this one, these two on. And this one will just read, because you can only read from here. If we keep clicking it, as you can hear, nothing else happens, which is good. We wanna turn that one on. And here we wanna put out for the small display. We wanna do the setting, good. Now the variable here, we want to put onto this one, but right now we can't, because why not? We don't know. So first thing, let's go, before we continue on this, let's go here, put this one onto passive. By passive, you can choose any device. If you have no, if you are set to active, you can choose a device. If you set to passive, turn it on, and it goes into no error. If you turn this one on, and you don't pick one here, it will flash error. So first, Let's name this one something that we can remember. So let's say transmitter test. Because you know, why not? Now this one is sending out, as you can see the setting is zero. But it's sending out a zero. We want this one to write to the transmitter. So here. Oh, let's say the screwdriver here, we're gonna put the transmitter test. We're going to do setting, the, the, the input, which is the what we're going to feed this one with, will be this value here, which is 21.02 something. So here we're going to take the test math, which is this one, turn it on. And now you can see the active setting here, the current setting here is 21.03. Lovely. So we're actually sending out this to whatever. If you go over here, set him. And here we want to find 
transmitter test, which is that one. <clears throat> Turn him on. And now he is not in error, but he's not. you can't see anything. You cannot see any physical data. Now here, we can now choose the logic transmitter, which is this one, and turn him on. Oh, we want to write, read a specific variable, of course, which is the sitting, and turn him on. You see now it says 21.02 here. Up here it says 21.02. That's fantastic. If you then go over here, and let's say adjust this one, that one will also change. It does a little, that's a slight delay. But it will change because you see that one changed more or less immediately. That I'm not sure how much delay there is, but there is a little bit. Yeah. So this, this, what this is, what's, what's cool about this is if you have a, a, let's say you have a battery station, a battery room, and you want to see the the current battery life in entire base in several rooms, you can have one, which is to passive. One transmitter set to passive, and then several spread on the base to to read from that one. This one can send to multiple one, and multi, like we can have multi of, multiple stations of this spread on the entire base. It uses. Uh, let's turn this off. Let's turn that off. That off. That off. And that off. And also this one. So right now we're using 90 watt. Turn that off, and we're using 40. This one, no matter what, will be using 50 watt. Just to keep that in mind. Right, next thing, next scenario that I want to show is what if we want to read from a weather station like out there. <clears throat> now, to do that, we will remove this, this one and this one and put up out, out there. So we can show. I can show how that would work. When you look at a weather station, it has this green light. It has this little fan here, and these actually indicate the current state of the weather. You can also, of course, read on it. So we have a mode. The mode zero means no storm. Mode one means storm is incoming, and mode mode two means storm is ongoing. The next weather event is a timer that will start counting down when the weather is about to change. I personally don't find any use of this one because it's a timer. It counts down, I think it's in seconds or whatever, it's useless. However, the mode, as long as it's not zero, you can do something like a light, siren, flashing light, something, closing doors, whatever. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two, we're gonna take two IO cards, like before. So we're gonna take a reader, we're going to take a rider and we're going to take f then we're going to take another transmitter please bear in mind this time i'm placing it not in the correct orientation of these because i want to save pretend to um, to save cables i'm not trying to save cables but I, I would like to so we have a power there we have data there we have data there good so let's keep the cable cutter let's do a curve there straight there curve here another curve another curve another curve here we can do it straight like this like i said i'm pretending to save cable but i'm not saving cable so this time we will change this one to let's say transmitter weather because this could be an actual thing you want to read at look at so we want this one to be set to passive as well so let's take the screwdriver i don't think you need the screwdriver to that no that's just a flip flop but you need it for that one so set it passive now he's ready to receive something so on your on the logic read we want to read from the weather station. I have a lot of stuff out here, so it'll take time. So that's the weather station. Now we want the setting, which is the... What does it say? Mode? Yeah, we want to read the mode. You see now? 
So now we're actually reading. It's, oh, that's good. So now the mode is one because a storm is coming. So it'll be coming at some point. Let's see if the timer is also running now. Yeah, so you see the, that timer is until the next storm. But I personally find that completely useless. So in here we put the logic reader. Output, we put the transmitter, transmitter, transmitter. We want to set the setting. Turn on. And it's just setting up one. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into the base and we're going to see how we can make this do something on our screen. So in here, I've changed a little bit. This one is now looking at the weather station. You see here it's mirroring weather station. The reader is reading this value and it says it's one. This one is currently reading this one, but I've removed the, the display, put up a light. Now, all I want to do is I want to put up a compare. So the compare will compare the read. So let's put in a read. It will compare the memory, which is zero. And if it is not equal, like so, then it'll be one. And then if this one, if, if this one is one, then the light will be on. So let's put Oh, sorry. I need a cable there. Silly me. Uh -huh. Like so. There we are. And then here we're going to take the compare. The output will be the D. And we put the on. Now, what if you want to change the color depending on the weather? Well, you can do that as well. So, so here, we're going to put what's called a, a math. We're going to put up another memory chip right here. Set this, whoops, that was a bit too much. We're going to set the memory to two. We're gonna take. We're gonna write the cable this up. So what this is doing, what we'll do now, is we will calculate the color depending on this. So in here we take in the compare no the um, the reader. So in here we take the reader. We take uh let's see uh, no memory color. So with this we can then calculate the color. And we wanna add and turn on. So by three, we'll get an orange. And if we get two here, we're gonna add two more. We get four and it's red. It's a simple little thing. Now we wanna set the color. So we do another one. So we take a IO. We have one here. And we can pop him down. Down here. Up here, I mean. Let's take some cable. Let's pop down there. Grab a screwdriver. The input will be the math unit. So, in math. Oh, this is the writer. A reader we want. So now that we have the writer, we want in, we want the math, and out, we want the LED, and we want the color. Turn it on. And this will automatically change the color. Lovely. 
So let's see when the storm comes and see what happens. And there we have it. You see now, here we have a two. We have a storm up there, it's also right up there. This is two, the storm is on. And it goes into it automatically. Lovely. And here you can see what happens if the weather stops. So now the storm is over. <clears throat> it goes into zero here. Everything turns off, well it turns off, and it goes into green. That doesn't really matter, but green is good, green is safe, but the light itself is off. So, a, a quick and easy way, no IC chip is used here, as you can see. Now the next thing we'll do is outside is dark. But I've installed some lights, you see some lights over there. See some lights there. However, these are on two different circuits. You have one circuit here, you see the transformer here. And you have one here with the transformer there. Now I want all of these lights to turn on from inside here. And now, how would you do that? Well, you would think you need to have a reader and a writer and then a transmitter. However, that's a simpler way to do it. And yes, I have done this already, but my recording fucked up. So we'll do it again. First, of course, the good and trusty transmitter. Then we need a IO chip, just one. Now the IO chip has a nice feature. So if you keep scrolling, you have the writer, you have the bat writer, you have the logic mirror, you have the slot reader, you have the bat reader, you have the regent reader, you have the bat slot reader, then you have the logic writer switch. You build that one. Now this one has an input for power, an output here for data, an input for data. We're not going to use that one because pfft, nah. This one we're going to turn to passive. We're going to call him transmitter. Transmitter outdoor light. You could use this one also with a solar sensor or whatever, something, you know, automatically. Here we're not going to do that. We want it to be fully old school fashioned. So turn it on. He is now sending out zero. You would like to put him away because that sound is quite annoying to listen to it if you in, in the long run. Now we want to send out to the outdoor light. We want to send out the setting. And by clicking here. Oops, let's turn on. So now it's zero. Now it's one. Easy peasy. Lovely. Let's go outside and put them up as well. <clears throat> now where you want to build it out here doesn't really matter. As long as it's on the right circuit, you can do whatever you want to. So we are going to build it. Let's, let's do it here. Why not? So here we will pop him in place. Then we have a logic reader. And we need a reader to read from this one. There's no, no way to get around that. So here we have the input, the input, which is also the output. Here we have the input, here we have the output. So we take a bats writer. And this way we can save a good chunk of cables. So we have a line there, line there. And going into the action network here, we have power there. And we have power there, and we have power there. Lovely. Next is, I've lost my screwdriver. Next thing is, we now set up this one. So this is a bats writer. So it'll write to a bats of things. So here we'll take all the wall long light. So all the wall light long. Yeah, wall light long. The output variable will be the on. And we'll read from the writer. The, 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 our input will be the reader. 
turn it on. And no error. Good. So here we will set, we will read from this one. So let's first turn here on. So where is the setting? There it is. We want to read from the transmitter outdoor light. Yeah, so if you're done like me, you actually made a mistake because this is not the power. We can remove that one. And there we are. Now we can turn it on. And he is now looking at the transmitter in there. We want to read on this one, this particular unit. It's also the only one we can read. And we want to read the setting. Turn them on. This is ready to go. <clears throat> Next over, we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, find a good space here. This is a mess because it's my testing. Yeah. So here we're going to put our control for the power. So let's do it this way. So first, the logic. That's writer. That's writer. It's called. Not. So here. We will have the control to control the light for the filtration area. We will call it logic, uh, batch writer. Have a space, of course. Then slot reader. Logic reader, sorry. And then we take another transmitter. This time remember to put the power, the quick position. And then we wire it up. This is the cheapest way to wire them up by far. Um, and I personally prefer it this way. So output will be, what are they called? The same one? Yeah, wall light long. Uh, wall light long. And we want to do on. And our logic reader will be our input. Turn them on. We want to put this one to read from the outdoor transmitter. Turn him on. This one cannot be on unless this one has a one. Otherwise, you won't know what to look for. So, logic transmitter and uh, setting. Turn him on. Lovely. Nothing is in error. Now we just need to have some night light to see what happens. So now you can see the night has settled again on Mars. We cannot see anything outside. It's pitch black except we can see a little bit here. But if we click that one. We have light. So with this light, you can now control outdoor light forever or indoor light, wherever it is. You can send this far away. There's no actual maximum distance for this device. It can transmit as far as you possibly want it to without any problem. So you can actually have a base hundreds of meters that way and hundred meters that way. And they can communicate by using this, which is amazing. You can also use it to transmit let's say a cooking order for a for a um, furnace if you want to or something like that you can do a lot of things with it um but anyway that is all i have for today next time we'll be looking to ways to control light perhaps even with the transmitter as well at least with the light sensor like these bad boys and these bad boys can do several things we have the daylight sensor for the sun, we have the motion for a person, and we have a gas, which we don't care about. So uh, that'll be next time. So until then, have a fantastic the rest of your day, and see you next time. Bye for now.